solar fences are gaining popularity. But do they make financial sense? Most videos only talk about benefits. But in this video, I will show you the numbers with the graphs. We'll compare vertical solar panel fences to roof mount setups in three locations. Houston, Nairobi and Berlin. Here's how the video is structured. We will quickly look at different mounting options for solar panel fences. Energy yield comparisons for Houston, Texas for many different scenarios. We will look if location matters and we will be using Nairobi and Berlin as an example. At the end, I will give you my recommendations. Let's get started. There are four main ways to build solar fences. The first one is attaching panels directly to your existing fence. This is simple, inexpensive and has minimal wind issues. As you will soon see, having bifacial panels is more advantageous. The second option is placing panels on a transparent fence like this one. So you can capture some bifacial gain. You can also place them between fence posts. It looks tidy, but replacing panels can be tricky if one is damaged because you need the exact same size. This option is good if you want to use bifacial solar panels as well, but only if the other side has no obstacles. And the last one is using specialized solar fence posts. This is the premium option at a higher cost. Whichever way you mount them, I recommend elevating the solar panels about 8 inches or 20 centimeters from the ground. This will reduce shade from grass and dirt accumulation because of rain. A good example is this installation. Now let's dive into the actual numbers to see how these solar fences perform. I've used a single 425 watt solar panel for all calculations. You can see me standing next to one in this picture. So you get an idea of the size. Starting with Houston, Texas. If we position this panel facing south at an optimal tilt of 28 degrees, we can expect an annual yield of around 610 kilowatt hours. You can see the monthly breakdown in the green column and the green line on the graph. Notice how energy production peaks during summer, which makes sense due to longer daylight hours and the sun being directly overhead. By the way, all these numbers come from PV Watts, a reliable and free online tool operated by the US Department of Energy. I've personally validated this data and found it accurate. You can use PV Watts yourself to simulate solar panel performance worldwide. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If we take the same 425 watt panel, but mount it vertically, which is 90 degrees, facing south, the annual yield drops to 342 kilowatt hours. You can see that in the red column and the red line on the graph. That's roughly half compared to the optimal 28 degree tilt. If we look at the graph, we can see that the green and the red line is close together during winter. The reason becomes clear when we look closely. I try to make a visual of why that is here. Vertical panels generate less power during summer because the sun is higher in the sky, but their winter yield remains almost as good as optimally tilted panels. This happens because the lower winter sun angle is ideal for vertical setups. You can see in the visual that in summer the angle of the sun to the solar panel is greater, while in the winter it is almost a 90 degree angle. But what if your roof is not facing south? Let's test east facing panels at the same 
28 degree angle. We get an annual yield of 526 kilowatt hours, about 14% less than south facing panels, which is to be expected. Now let's consider an east facing vertical panel. This setup yields about 312 kilowatt hours annually, just 9% less than the south facing vertical option, making vertical east facing panels a surprisingly viable choice. I checked the scenario for west panels as well, and the results closely matched the east facing setup. These experiments were just with regular panels. Next, let's see how bifacial panels, which generate power from both sides, affect performance. First, mounting a vertical bifacial panel south, with its backside facing north, gives us around 409 kilowatt hours annually, about 33% less than an optimal south facing standard panel. What about an east facing vertical bifacial panel? This setup delivers an impressive 488 kilowatt hours per year, the best yield among all vertical configurations we tested. Remember, this high performance relies on having no obstructions behind the panel to ensure sunlight reaches the panel's rear side. Here's a ranking of these configurations based on annual energy harvests. The first one is the optimal angle of 28 degrees facing south. The second one is the optimal tilt angle of 28 degrees facing east. Then we have the vertical bifacial panel facing east. Then the vertical bifacial panel facing south. And then we have the vertical standard panel facing south. And lastly, we have the vertical standard panel facing east. From these results, we can conclude that vertical panels perform nearly as well as optimally tilted panel during winter months, as we can see here. East facing bifacial panels outperform south facing bifacial panels, as we saw in this example. And lastly, the overall difference between the best optimal tilt and the worst performing vertical east facing standard panel is roughly a 50% reduction in annual energy yield. I also analyzed Sydney in Australia and found similar results due to comparable latitude. But remember, in the southern hemisphere, panels should face north instead of south. Which brings me to the following question. Does location matter? The simple answer is yes. Location matters greatly. As we've seen, vertical panels perform best in winter, when the sun's angle is lower in the sky. This allows sunlight to strike the panels more directly than when the sun is overhead. Therefore, we can expect vertical panels to perform better the further away we move from the equator, whether north or south. Let's illustrate this clearly by comparing two cities. Nairobi, which is close to the equator, and Berlin, which is far away from the equator. First, Nairobi, Kenya. Placing our standard 425 watt panels horizontal at 0 degrees, gives us the best annual yield of 614 kilowatt hours, thanks to the overhead sun. You can see this on the green line. Now, if we take a bifacial panel and position it vertically facing east, we get approximately 464 kilowatt hours, which is illustrated as the red line and is about 25% lower than the ideal horizontal orientation. Next, let's go to Berlin, Germany, a city located much further away from the equator. Using an optimal tilt angle of 50 degrees facing south, a standard panel yields around 437 kilowatt hours per year. 
However, if we position a bifacial panel vertically and face it east, the yield drops slightly to 340 kilowatt hours, which is a 22% decrease compared to the optimal tilt. But what if your fence isn't transparent, making bifacial panels ineffective? In Berlin, vertical standard panels facing south produce 291 kilowatt hours annually, which you can see in the yellow line, while east facing vertical panels yield about 210 kilowatt hours, which is the gray line. So facing a normal panel east gives us about a 50% reduction compared to an ideally angled panel to the south. Considering the electricity costs about 35 cents per kilowatt hour in Germany, let's see how this number translates financially. Now, one euro is about the same as one dollar. The first panel, which is optimally tilted and facing south, generates approximately 153 euros per year. The second vertical bifacial panel, facing east, generates 119 euros annually. A vertically mounted standard panel, facing south, is worth around 102 euros per year. And the vertically mounted standard panel, facing east, produces 74 euros annually. So given that I purchased my 425 watt panels for 65 euros each, even the worst performing scenario, vertical east facing standard panels, would pay for itself within just one year if I lived in Germany. So here's what we learned from this comparison. In locations away from the equator, Vertical bifacial panels facing east perform well, losing only 22% compared to optimally tilted setups. When your electricity cost is high, the payback time is usually much faster. Let me know how much you pay per kilowatt hour and your location. So what's my final recommendation? If you have the space and are considering solar fences, I encourage you to go ahead. However, specialized solar fence posts can significantly increase the cost. If your fence is transparent to let sunlight reach both sides of the panels like this one, bifacial panels are your best choice. Otherwise, regular solar panels will still provide good value and are a worthwhile investment. If you want to learn more about solar, check out my beginner's playlist here. And I think you might like this video as well. Consider subscribing for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.